Hello, my name is Pete Gerlach. I have been a professional family systems therapist for 33 years and I've been wandering around the planet for over 70 years. Uh, during that time I've become very, very interested in human relationships, human development, and trying to help myself and other people live more productive, serene, happy lives. I've created a nonprofit educational website to pass on what I've learned across my many years. The website is Seven Self Improvement Lessons. It's available to anybody who's interested in their own lives. Lesson four of the seven is about improving and optimizing your relationships. I assume that you have some important relationships in your life. Uh, and the purpose of this video is part of Lesson 4. It means to focus on what I believe is a pretty common problem. What I want to offer you here is some ideas on what is the problem, and most importantly, what can you do to avoid or reduce the problem. What's the problem? I'm going to call it boundary violations. Notice what your reaction is if you hear me mention that phrase. What I'm speaking about is uh, when someone, another person, a child or an adult, does something that crosses a limit or violates one of your boundaries. There's all kinds of examples, small to large. A boundary, as I'm using the word here, means um, action by another person which if it bothers you you either take some action or you don't take some action the boundary is the dividing line between I will act I won't act um, as you know everybody's got irritating behaviors and some of them you just accept others you don't accept so think about the boundaries that you have you probably have several dozen, score, or even hundreds of boundaries. Uh, a common one, for instance, among many of us, is do not interrupt me when I'm trying to tell you something important. If you interrupt me, you just violated my boundary. Uh, there's lots of others. Please tell me the truth. Don't lie to me. Uh, that's a boundary. Please uh, act on your promises. If you say you're going to be on time, be on time. If you're not on time, you just violated your promise to me, which is a form of violating a boundary. So you get the idea. When people do things that are unacceptable to you, they have crossed a boundary. The boundary may be invisible. You may have announced the boundary first, or you may never have told them that it's a boundary. Um, there are a number of variables here. Anyway, my point is, what can you do to either reduce or react positively when, you, uh, when your boundary is violated? Before I summarize a series of options you have, note the difference between a boundary conflict and a boundary violation. Boundary conflicts uh, might look like um, I really don't like it when you chew with your mouth open. Please don't do that. Well, I don't care about people chewing with their mouth open. It doesn't bother me. So what's the big deal? That's a boundary conflict. It's a form of values conflict, which is the sub subject of another video. A boundary violation is when people uh, accidentally or intentionally disregard a limit that you've set. So note the difference between boundary conflicts and boundary violations. I'm focusing on the latter, violations. To say what I hope is obvious, boundary violations range from small to large. Um, significant violations stress relationships. I suspect you would agree with that. Okay, They cause hurt, anger, frustration, um, various other things. They stress us. Um, recall for a moment, is based on what I've just mentioned, 
Recall for a moment when someone has violated your boundary recently. Can you think of an example? Child or an adult? Co-worker, mate, friend, neighbor, relative? Someone who disregarded something that you think they should know or they do know is important to you. They did it anyway. Think what that felt like and think what you did. You probably, like me, have established kind of an automatic way of reacting to typical boundary violations. We ignore them, we minimize them, we rationalize them, we poo-poo them, we become aggressive, uh, we lose control, we become impulsive. Lots of different ways to react to a boundary violation. Each of us has our own preferred style. Um, styles range from toxic to beneficial, meaning beneficial meaning they improve your self-esteem and improve your relationships. Toxic reactions do the reverse. So what's your reaction style? Toxic or nourishing? Something to think about. I'd like to propose the opinion the real problem with boundary violations is respect and trust. The violations themselves are not the problem. They are secondary problems. The real problem is feeling disrespected and losing respect by losing trust in the violator. Those are the real issues. So I'm going to dig down below the violation to see what's really going on. Take a look at self-respect, mutual respect, and trust. Those are the key issues. I've got other videos and other articles on those two important subjects. Okay, so much for the introduction here. Now, when people violate your boundaries, how can you handle them both best? I, I propose there is a best way. You form your own judgment about this. Um, the first step in reacting in a good way to a boundary violation is be aware. Be aware someone has just crossed your boundary or violated the limit of yours. Um, the alternative is not being aware. Um, you can judge yourself whether you are generally aware or not. Some violations are obvious and you will of course be aware of them. Uh, others are more subtle. Be aware after you say, oh, I've been violated. Be aware how does the violation affect you? Short term, long term. It lowers my self-esteem, causes me to feel hurt and frustrated and anxious. It stirs up my false self, in case you know what that is. It lowers my trust in this other person. It greatly disappoints me. It frustrates me. Notice the effect in your unique case, situational case. Your personality is different and unique. Notice how the violation affects you. Put words to it. Get clear on that. You're going to use the words in a moment. The next step in reacting well to a boundary violation you may not instinctively know about it is check to see who's running your personality. If you have studied some of my Lesson 1 videos or materials on the web, you'll know that, in my opinion as a therapist after 33 years of study, I propose that all people have personalities composed of subselves, talented subselves, like members of an orchestra or a sports team. Each subself has a unique talent. One of the subselves' talent is ex expert leadership. If allowed to, this one leader subself of your personality will guide, set limits, set goals, devise plans, solve problems, delegate. It's an expert, instinctive leader. You have a true self. The problem is. Many times, other subselves won't let your true self guide. In that case, you're being governed by a, quote, false self. False selves, meanwhile, what they call all, cause all kinds of problems. So, what I'm proposing here is, 
a conscious step if you're going to react well to a violation, a boundary violation, is check out who's running my personality. Is it my true self? If so, go ahead. If not, the real issue is how can I get my true self back in charge? That's the subject of lesson one in my website and a number of other videos in playlists 1B and 1C in my channel on YouTube. So, um, be aware of the violation, be aware of the impact of the violation, check to see who's running your personality. This can take about a minute or two. It sounds like a lot of work, but after practicing, it becomes instinctive. Okay? Um, then decide calmly, when you're not distracted, do you want to confront the violator or not? There's lots of factors involved in deciding yes or no. And if you say yes, then decide when. When do I want to confront? Do you want to do it impulsively? Do you want to plan? Do you want to take some time? Do you want to look for the right situation? How urgent is this confrontation? That's a lot of judgment calls, and if yourself is in charge, she or he is going to know how to answer those important questions. So decide if you want to confront. I propose that often not confronting significant boundary violations lowers your self-respect. What do you think? That's a high price to pay. Okay? If you decide to confront, another awareness to ask yourself, another preparation step is, do I think that the violator is a grown, wounded child? Once again, if you don't know what that means, I encourage you to study Lesson 1 in my website and the related uh, YouTube videos and playlists 1B and 1C. If the other person is a grown, wounded child, an adult, is a grown, wounded child, you can expect them to react badly to your confrontation. They'll argue, they'll deny, they'll splutter, they'll leave, they'll counter-accuse, they'll change the subject, but they won't be able to hear you. So before you confront, um, adjust your expectations. If the other person is minimal, minimally wounded, and or if they seem to be run by their true self currently, then your chances of being accurately heard go way up. So stop to think. Is this is person B a grown wounded child? Are they ruled by a false self or a true self? That may take you 20 seconds. So far we've spent about a minute and a half preparing. Um, if you want to go ahead with the confrontation, um, choose an attitude of uh, mutual respect. Whether they're true, ruled by a true, a true self or not, I propose the outcome of your confrontation is most likely to be satisfactory. If you believe my needs and their needs are equally valid and important, I'm not one up, they are not one up. Those of us who are grown wounded children typically put our own needs one down. A group of us say, no, 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 we're superior. So check your attitude about the other person. If it's what I call equal, equal, if you say, your and my needs and worth is the same here, go ahead. Otherwise, you're probably ruled by a false self. That becomes the real problem. So choose an equal, equal attitude. Choose a time when you are undistracted and the other person is undistracted. Ask them if they're willing to hear some feedback from you. That's an option. Um, that's a request. You can also demand that they listen to you. That's a separate subject. The way of delivering your confrontation is best, in my biased opinion, by using a communication tool called an I message, the letter I. I have a video on that, and part of Lesson 2 on my website shows you how to be an effective asserter, and an I message is a type of assertion. Real quickly, it has three parts. Part one is a description of the other person's behavior 
in a way that's objective and factual that could be recorded on tape or um, a camera or something. Okay, so you describe briefly and factually the other person's behavior. That might sound like, you know, when I ask you to not chew with your mouth open and you go ahead and disregard me and do that anyway, that's part one of an iMessage. It's a factual description. You can capture that on a video cam. And part two of your confrontation is, here's how your behavior affects me. When you chew with your mouth open, despite my requesting you not do that, I feel disregarded, disrespected, hurt, annoyed, and frustrated. Insert your feelings. You have a right to your feelings. You are not in charge of whether or not the other person likes this or doesn't like this. You have a right to your feelings and you have a right to express your feelings. That's part two of an iMessage. And optional part three is an action step. I need you to blah blah blah. I again want to remind you it's important to me that you choose that you eat meals with your mouth closed. And a different way of part three is to issue a warning. <coughs> if you choose to violate this boundary of mine, here's what I'm going to do. And insert a doable, practical option. I'm going to get up and walk away. I'm going to confront you right on the spot. I'm going to go, ah! I'm going to do something. But I'm going to make my point that you're violating my boundary and I want you to stop. I need you to stop. So that's the, you, you, may, you may or may not warn of a consequence or actually do a consequence. But this is a very effective way of confronting someone who has violated your boundary. This works with kids too if you use appropriate age level language. Okay? If the other person is a grown wounded child, expect them to resist. What I mean by resist is expect them to get huffy, to get hurt, to collapse, to moan, to cry, to get belligerent, to start attacking you, to change the subject. Um, do all kinds of things rather than listen to what you're saying and take it in. You're going to do something else. I'm simply saying as part of a planned confrontation, expect them to resist. It's normal. They're not bad. They're defending themselves. When they defend themselves, use the skill of empathic listening, which if you don't know what that is, see lesson two on my website. Use empathic listening and then repeat your confrontation. Do it again. Simply, clearly, with good eye contact, calm voice. The goal here is to get them to recognize you have a boundary, you're serious about enforcing it, and you need their cooperation. And if they don't cooperate, you're going to react. That's the whole point here. If you've done this, all the preparation and taken the um, you planned an effective I message and delivered it with respect and they say gee I'm sorry I really will try and be better about that if you get satisfaction if you feel heard thank the other person and thank yourself for a job well done notice what happens to your self esteem you stood up for yourself that's the best way of reducing future boundary violations also, as you're thinking about what I'm proposing here, if you have young people in your life, I encourage you to reflect. What are they being taught, if anything, on how to respond effectively when people violate their boundaries? Is anybody teaching them what you just learned here in this video? I hope so. If you have kids of your own, you have, in my opinion, the responsibility among many other things, to show them what a boundary violation is and how to react effectively to it. Um, I hope you will be thoughtful and reflect on what I've said. I just covered an awful lot of ground here. 
I want to give you the web address. It is not a link. You can't click on it, but you can copy it and paste it in your browser. It will take you to an article in my ad-free, non-profit, self-improvement -edu self education, self-improvement website, sfhelp.org. .org. The article will reiterate what I've said here in this video. And it will also give you some information on boundary conflicts and what to do about them. So, if you've stuck with me throughout this long speech, I appreciate it. I hope you found this thoughtful, thought-provoking, and useful. I appreciate your attention. I'm glad to get your comments, uh, hopefully constructive, um, and any questions you may have. So, I wish you well and enjoy feeling you're in control of people and situations where your boundaries are violated. Thanks for watching.